cultural differences between Ukraine and UK. Look, I can probably do a whole YouTube video about this, but I've decided to do a few TikToks about it. Number one, number one, okay? This whole video is going to be number one, actually. Smiling. Now, in UK, we like to smile a lot. You're walking past a random person on the street, and you don't know them, but you give them a little nod and a little, you know, maybe good morning, morning, or... I don't know, in UK, we're just very... We like to be very friendly and make it clear. In Ukraine, they're polite. They're very polite. No joke. Most, I say most. But they don't, they don't smile. They don't want to smile. <laughs> In Ukraine, you walk down the street and if you smile, then you're too happy. It's weird. You don't smile. You just walk, keep a straight face. You know, they only smile when they're really, really, really happy. I quite like it. I've been practicing my bitch face. So. But honestly, they are polite, but they just do it all without smiling. <laughs> Another cultural difference between UK and Ukraine. Now, I actually noticed this one just the other day on the bus. I don't know why I've only just noticed it. In UK, you get on the bus, you get a ticket. Bam, you're on the bus. That's the only way, all right? And tickets are expensive in the UK as well. Now, in Ukraine, they're a bit more lenient. You now, you could get on the front, you could get on the back. And in that case, you might not get on and actually see the bus driver and give them the money in your hand. The other day, I'd noticed that... People have been passing their bus there along the bus to other passengers in front of them. And it came to me, someone handed me 10 grip and I was like, oh, thank you. But then I realised that someone's there and had to pass it on. Come on, in the UK, that would not be going to the bus driver. That would be going straight in someone's pocket. Come on. It's really surprising because there's no queuing and everyone's always pushing to the front. But give someone your tram fare or bus fare and they will hand it to the driver. Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine, part three. These are getting pretty popular. Huh? Pharmacies. Now in UK we have normally just one pharmacy in every town or so. Obviously we have hospitals and stuff, but you know, we have pharmacies maybe every mile or so within the city. Not very close together at least. In Ukraine, I'd compare pharmacies to pubs. That's how many pharmacies we have. Pharmacies equals pubs in Ukraine. I'm not joking, guys. In every street, every block, there's a pharmacy. I don't know why. Why so many? And not only this, you don't even need prescriptions for most drugs. Actually, you don't need a prescription. You can basically get anything. <laughs> anything. So there we go. Big cultural difference. You can get anything you want, and they're everywhere. Pharmacies. Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine, part four. Crossing the road. Every time I cross a road in Ukraine, I think, will I survive? No, it's not that bad. Traffic lights and the zebra crossings here, they don't always mean something to the drivers. So sometimes you just have to hope. You know, you're crossing the road and you just think, right, I've gone for it now. Is he going to stop? I don't know. I have to say, it's one nice thing when I went back to the UK, just people complying to, you know, like, basic rules. But that's just another aspect of why I love Ukraine so much and how, how crazy it is. <laughs> Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine, part five. Coffee and cigarettes. On the streets in UK, what are you going to see? Maybe someone holding a cup of Costa or Starbucks. In Ukraine, no, 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 we have one of these. Just to confirm, it's a paper cup filled with espresso. And then in the other hand, you got one of these. It's a cigarette. This is the classic, this is the classic thing you see on the streets of Ukraine. I love it. And to be honest, it's often in just one hand, you know, cup, cigarette. That's your breakfast. These little espressos, they're really cheap anyway. And cigarettes, come on as well. So for that mocha frappuccino or whatever you spent five quid on at Starbucks, you could get like a month's load of cigarettes and espressos for that kind of money. In summary, come to Ukraine. Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine, part six. Males and women. In UK, you can go on the street as a girl, as a woman, and just be wearing whatever. But girls here, they always make an effort. I have to always make an effort. That is if I want to look Ukrainian, which is what I'm always <laughs> trying to do. Just out here trying to blend in. And nails is literally the number one thing. They love their nails. And I literally got my gel nails for the first time <sighs> the other day. Look at but no joke, most women in their 20s here, they all make an effort. They go outside, full face of makeup. Some even wear like bloody heels in the snow. I'm sorry, that's just not possible for me. I'm gonna slip. It is really nice that they make so much effort every day. And with the number of salons and how cheap it is, 
Why not? Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine, part seven. Stopping the bus, AKA Astanovka, Astanova, Astanovkia. In England, there's a button. There's just a button. You press it. Stop. Now such buttons do exist in Ukraine. They're right there. Red, stop. They're there. But never have I ever seen a single person use it. What's more effective than pressing the button? Shouting, of course shouting. Nobody speaks on the bus, nobody, you have to be quiet. But if you want to get off, you can make as much noise as you want. When I first got the bus, I was like, wait, did I do something wrong? They shouted at me. Stop, Astonovka. But look, I know I'm mispronouncing it, so reply to this video and teach me. Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine, part eight. Holes in the road and basically all health and safety in the uk if some building work is going on you know you have a few barriers at least nobody can go there sometimes they close the whole road for just a tiny little pothole in ukraine it could be literally a sinkhole or a bloody crater and there would be nothing around no guarding at all. Walking down the street, you gotta keep your head up because if there's a hole, you're gonna find out by being in it. I've literally been walking home from a night out and there was a massive hole and I was like, thank god I'm not more drunk right now because that. Don't think my medical insurance covers falling into holes. So yeah, Ukraine should really invest in some barriers or something. Cultural differences between the UK and Ukraine part 9. Number 8 was about safety, but I have some more words about safety differences. <laughs> Using string as a barrier. Yes, in my previous video, I know I said they don't have any barriers around massive holes in the road or any roadworks they do. Really, I forgot about this baby. And yes, for roadworks, they don't. But if there's something falling from the top of a building, they will put a piece of string a metre away from the building just to warn you that you can be walking by and something could fall from the top of the building and kill you. Really, I don't care. It's at least something because I have seen stuff falling from roofs. Why I have this on my head, you know, like my hair is kind of a safety net. You know, anything's just going to bounce off, so... Yay! Cultural differences between UK and Ukraine part 10. The things people sell on the streets. In the UK we have markets, we have some random stuff being sold on the streets, but everything's within a certain boundary. In Ukraine, no, 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 you can find anything. One of my favourites is this woman that sells pegs. Nothing special about these pegs, she has about 10 of them on like a piece of cardboard like this. I mean, it's just so specific. And then we've got like the cute dogs and animals that aren't even for sale. They're so fluffy, I'm gonna die. And then the fish or the meat being sold. Yes, it's fine, perfectly normal. Fish, meat, yeah, yeah, it's good. But when the meat is on the floor, like the literal floor, <laughs> like a little piece of cardboard, I'm not gonna eat meat off the floor. At the markets when they're chopping it up, no health and safety. Are 